going on everyone? Back with another episode of Stuff and Things and today we are finally tackling the video on the one wheel pint. You guys may have seen me open this in a mail time video a couple weeks back. Actually it's probably been like a month now and I've been procrastinating this video like crazy because it's just too much fun to ride. There's already a ton of good videos out there from some awesome creators and I'm sure you guys have watched them all if you have any interest in one wheels or the one wheel pint. So for the past month or so, I've just been riding around on this thing. I also have my XR with me today so we can do a little bit of a side by side comparison. And I asked on Instagram if you guys have any questions on the pint. So by the end of this video, I will be answering some of those. And yeah, let's just get right into the typical review on the one wheel pint. Let's talk about specs. At the core of this little pint size stoke machine, you will find a 750 watt hypercore brushless motor, very similar to that on the other one wheels like the one wheel plus and the one wheel plus XR. There are a lot of differences when it comes to this new pint and one of the main ones being that this is about 20% smaller all around. It is 27 inches long from tip to tail and it's coming in at just 23 pounds, which still sounds like a lot, but when compared to some of the other one wheels, the difference is huge. There's still no remote, which is a huge plus to riding a one wheel over any other electric skateboard. You just kind of think about going in a direction and it just kind of does whatever you're thinking. And there's also some new intelligent LED lights on the board and we will talk about those in a second. The pint has a top speed of 16 miles per hour and a range of six to eight miles. Future Motion does a pretty good job at nailing down those specs and I have not been disappointed yet with anything that they've released. This is one company that actually releases real world specs that stack up to the real world testing that I'm typically used to. The pint will go from completely dead to a full charge in 120 minutes with the standard charger, but One Wheel also offers an ultra charger for the pint, which will give you a full charge in just 50 minutes. Everything else on the pint is basically exactly what you could expect from One Wheel. This thing is completely built like a tank with the metal rails running from tip to tail. I am using one of the pint fenders on here, which fits really, really nicely, and it is keeping my foot pads clean for the most part. There's just so much awesomeness packed into one little package here, so let's head out for a ride and we'll talk about it a little bit more. Disregard all that noise behind me right now, I don't know if you guys can hear that, but that is an open gate bridge that people are driving across and I just rode over it on a one wheel. That's one thing that you will absolutely not do with an electric skateboard. So I decided to switch up the filming locations today and ride some trails because as you guys can probably imagine, one wheels are great on trails. If you've been watching my channel, you'll see me riding all over the country, in the backwoods, out in Colorado and Atlanta and all over the place, I'm bringing my one wheel with me everywhere so I figured we might as well do this test on the trail today this is basically going to be me like mind dumping all of the information and the things that I've been thinking about when you're talking about the pint versus the other one wheels so as we ride I'm just gonna kind of be all over the place talking about why I love the pint so much so first of all the size this thing is significantly lighter than my one wheel XR this thing is 23 pounds which like I mentioned is still kind of heavy when you're talking about an electric board that you ride around on however the one wheel XR was 27 pounds just recently I was up north riding on some trails in the middle of nowhere don't know where I was no cell reception and I was about a mile and a half away from my base camp when the one wheel died I must not have been paying attention to the charge on it and carrying a one wheel over your head for about a mile and a half, weighs 27 pounds, it's not fun. The pint would have been much more enjoyable in that situation because of the little mag handle on the side here. This is a great addition. I wish the other one wheels had this because it makes taking it around with you that much easier. It kind of like fits into your life more. However, they got rid of the grab handle on the front. That's one thing that was like kind of annoying and we wanted the side handle on the bigger ones, but now they gave us the side handle, but they took away this one too. You may think it's nice, but I can't tell you how many times you come to a complete stop and then you just go like this to grab it, and then you don't have that handle there anymore. So I kind of wish that was still there, but whatever. This looks like a pretty prime one wheel trail right here. 
So how do you turn this thing on? Same as the XR right here. They did change the button on this one. Before there used to be a clicky mechanical button in here where it actually like recessed into the board. Now they cover that with a cap sort of a rubbery cap with the one wheel logo on it and then when you press that the board does have to be on a flat level surface like this right here press that once you'll see the intelligent lights light up and then you're good to go another thing that they did change is the charge port on here it's a little bit smaller so you won't be able to use your charger from your other one wheels the one that does come with the pint is a little bit smaller and like I mentioned they do have that ultra charger so if you want to get this thing charged and get back out on the trails as soon as possible that might be the best option for you so what is the deal with the intelligent lights up here? I honestly only know like one or two of the codes that go with them. For the most part, I will show you the ones that I actually use and take note of. When I turn it on, it will first light up full, flash magenta, and then go back to full. That means there is a full charge battery on this thing because all of the lights are lit up. And that flash for magenta means that the simple stop is turned on, and we will talk about that in a little bit. Now you will notice if I press on the front here, the blue light lights on the left side because because I have pressure on there. Now if I press on the right side, lights over there. So if for some reason you put your foot on here and it is not covering both of the sensors, it will show which side does not have pressure on it. There is another one if you're holding your one wheel upright like this and turn it on, it's gonna flash yellow like that because you did not have it down on the ground. Now the one wheel is not gonna go anywhere because it needs to be level before you start it. So now before we start riding down this trail, let's talk about that simple stop. So what is simple stop? The original simple stop was just like this. You just jump off, everything is good to go. You gotta leave the board with both feet at the same time. I can't make that any more clear. I've seen so many people wreck on a one wheel because they don't understand that. So if you were never comfortable with jumping off the one wheel, what would be the other option to get off when they did not have simple stop? Well, if I lift my heel, it takes pressure off of this side of the pad the LED lights will indicate that, and then it will disengage the motor and you will drop back down. But now with simple stop, none of that stuff really matters anymore as long as you have it enabled. So now I wanna stop and dismount from the one wheel. I come to a complete stop, less than one mile per hour. Now I simply rock backwards and it disengages just like that. If I get back on it, good to go. Want to stop, dismount, disengages just like that. Now this is a feature that you can turn off in the app and I've actually come to sort of like it. My first impression once I got on it and tried to go in reverse, I was like, ooh, I don't know, I don't really like that. If you are an advanced rider and you like riding switch and kind of spinning around and stuff like that, then yes, I would definitely recommend taking it off. However, that is a super nice touch for a newer one wheel that's a little bit more friendly to people who have never been on one before. And that is a feature that I will leave on on mine for now because I'm constantly putting new people on one wheels and so far everyone loves it. All right, now it's time to really ride. I'll come up to the balance point and take off. I don't know where this trail actually leads, so let's just kind of cruise around until we find something cool. found an old lock here. Pretty cool looking. That water is probably disgusting though. So let's talk about the rideability of the Pint. What makes this thing different than the XR in the way that it actually feels? Well, the main one is right here. You're looking at it, the tire. Since the Pint is smaller than the other one wheels, then of course the tire is going to be smaller as well. Like I mentioned, this is a 10 and a half inch tire. The main thing that makes it feel different though is how this is contoured here. The tire on my XR is a little bit more flat in terms of like, it's kind of squared off. This one, however, is more rounded and the second that you step on it, you notice that difference right away. A lot of people will say that this feels kind of squirrely if they're used to the other one wheels, but there's also some people who like it because of the ultra maneuverability that you get with something like this. Now, people are doing tire swaps on their one wheels all the time. I don't plan on doing anything like that anytime soon because I wouldn't know the first thing about getting this wheel off of here. But the curviness of this tire is something that I am definitely a fan of and it rides unlike any other one wheel that I've ridden before. 
Now the One Wheel XR compared to this pint is definitely a lot more off-road oriented if you want to call it that. Because of the roundness on this pint tire, it makes riding it off-road and on trails a little bit sketchy compared to the other one wheels. But if you do have experience with riding off-road and through grass and in areas that almost every one wheel can go, then you should have no problem getting used to riding the pint in the same places. If I know for a fact that I'm going somewhere where there will be off-road riding, chances are I'm gonna go with the XR. However, if I don't really know where I'm going and I know that I'm not going that far, I'm gonna go with the pint. These one wheels, no matter which one you are talking about, they're straight up adventure machines. They are great for taking with you everywhere you go, but each of them do something a little bit better. My XR would definitely be geared towards going into the unknown, not knowing where I'm going, what the terrain's gonna be like, or how far I'm going. Whereas the pint to me is more of like a commuter, a really fast, nimble thing that you wanna take around a city so you can weave in and out of people and just get places quickly. And then you can just pick it up and bring it with you into whatever store, coffee shop, restaurant, whatever you're walking into. That's right, there is a One Wheel app and they do have an Apple Watch app as well. That is super convenient, that way you don't have to keep pulling out your phone to see how much charge you have left. And speaking of that, let's actually stop and take a look at the app and talk about the digital shaping for a second. It's a pretty wild looking tree. So I'm gonna pull up the One Wheel app here. Granted, if it's working or not, we will talk about that in a second. Reconnecting, reconnecting. There we go, okay, so, oh, reconnecting again. Come on, come on. Okay, if this connection stays stable right now, I will show you guys what this is all about. So, you can see the 80% battery life there. Everything is basically the same as when you're connected to any other one wheel. And in the bottom, you will see I am in Pacific mode, which is one of the digital shaping choices that you can pick from. If I swipe to the left, I'm now in the red wood mode. You just saw it flash activated there. And then if you click on that question mark, it will show you a little bit about how it's going to ride. So this is gonna be for a more beginner rider, max speed of 12 miles per hour, and it's more on the playful side, and it's best for around town. Now if I swipe over to Pacific, this is my personal favorite, and this is similar to the cruise settings on the XR. It's really flowy, it sort of feels like a powder day. Like it says here, loose and buttery, and this is definitely one of my favorites on the pint. Max speed, you get that full 16 miles per hour. If I bump up again, now we're in the elevated mode, which is good for riding up hills. I pretty much never ride in this mode, like ever, so you can kind of ignore that one unless you live in a hilly area. And then all the way up to Skyline, which is sort of like the delirium mode. This is going to be the most aggressive and more trail-oriented mode on the one-wheel pint. Now I'm gonna go back into the Pacific mode, and like you guys saw there, the connection on this app has not been that great, and I'm not sure why. The setup was really easy, and I was able to connect my new one wheel very easily to the app, and as of right now, it's okay, but every once in a while, while I'm riding, this thing just drops connection all the time. It's not the end of the world. Oh, there you go, just dropped connection again. It's not the end of the world if that happens because the phone is obviously not controlling the board, but it is nice to have a good Bluetooth connection. While we're out here just cruising, let's hop into some questions from Instagram and answer a couple while I make my way back towards the van. The first one, right on top, says, can you do any tricks on it? Uh, is riding off-road considered a trick, or... Uh, here, this is about as good as a trick gets with my riding capabilities.
Not that good to do on loose rocks, but the turning radius on this thing makes it turn on a dime. It can also kind of stop on a dime too. It stops pretty quickly. But yeah, as far as tricks goes, that's all I got. I would love to see someone try to kickflip one of these though. <laughs> Next question, is it worth it for a beginner that has never been into skateboards and snowboarding? If you look at people like myself riding one wheels and it looks fun to you, then I would say, yeah, I mean, it's worth it. The learning curve is definitely different than riding a snowboard or a skateboard, but multiple times I've told people that this is about as close to snowboarding on the ground with no snow as you could possibly get. It just carves loose and buttery. You can just kind of like spin around in circles and it's just a really cool, unique feeling. So yeah, I would say it would be worth it for a beginner. And you got the simple stop too, so that helps. Can you ride it in powder? You can ride it in the snow. I've seen people do that, but I mean, it already feels like I'm riding in powder right now, so I wouldn't recommend that. Does size matter? <laughs> in this case, yes. I think one of the reasons why I like the pint is because it's so small and it fits into my life a little bit easier. Like I keep mentioning, it's portable. You can pick it up and carry it around with you and you're not lugging this big, massive, clunky XR around. Here's a great question. This is one that I was kind of worrying about myself. Can huge feet fit comfortably on the smaller size board? I wear a size like 11 and a half, sometimes 12 depending on what shoe and this is how my feet lay on the foot pads. My feet definitely hang off a little bit so you're not really using like toe pressure you're more using like the ball of your foot pressure and it's kind of a weird feeling to get used to and I was worried about that in the beginning but as you can see I'm doing just fine. Does it float? Hmm. It doesn't float. Would you choose a one wheel over an electric skateboard? I've said this before and I'll say it again. I don't know what it is, but the way my lifestyle is, I guess, I much prefer a one wheel over any electric skateboard that I've tested. They're like adventure machines. I can bring them with me everywhere I go and not have to worry about the terrain. I can ride over sticks and rocks without having to worry about flying off and dropping my camera and things like that. Everyone always asks me, dude, what's your favorite electric board? It's gotta be the one wheel. Here's a good question. Is it noticeably slower than the XR? I'm not gonna say that it's slower because it feels really quick and nimble. The top speed and numeric value is definitely slower, but the thing that I notice most is the pushback. The pushback comes a lot earlier because the top speed is only 16 miles per hour. So when I push and lean forward a little bit more and get closer to that 16 miles per hour, Right there, I got the pushback and it's saying, hey, don't overload the motors too much because we're not gonna be able to keep you balanced that much longer. Another good question, can you fly with it? A friend of mine also bought a pint and he has flown with it. I saw a picture of him shoving it into the overhead bin on an airplane. I'm not gonna say you can because it really depends on the airline, but I've seen it done and I probably won't end up doing that because I like it too much and I don't want TSA to take it away. All right, we're back and we got reception again, so let's hit a few more of your questions here. Best battery distance on the Pint versus the XR so far. The longest range that I ever got on the XR was 18 miles. I went out for a trip and I was just like cruising on some back roads. Next thing you know, I ended up in the next town over and then I got the 50% battery signal and I was like, well, I might as well just keep going. So I went back roads another way and made a full 18 mile trip on this thing. I couldn't believe it. There were a lot of hills, but there was also some regen going down other hills. It was pretty impressive. And as far as the pint goes, I probably only have like 50 miles on it right now. And I haven't actually done a full blown distance test, full charge from start to finish, ride this thing till it dies. But I guarantee you it will be getting at least six to eight miles depending on the terrain. So far today, I already went a distance of five miles and I still have 30% battery left, so I would say that that's pretty good. Is it fast enough? Do you feel that it's easier to nosedive and how is the ground clearance? Well, as far as ground clearance goes, 
It's extremely hard to tell, but I would say that you're probably not going to be able to tell the difference. And is it fast enough? Do you feel that it's easier to nosedive? Like I mentioned, there is pushback and you get it very strong and very early on. The top speed on my app was reading 14 and a half miles per hour, so not quite 16, but once you get up to that 16, if you're pushing through that pushback to get there, chances are you're gonna be flying off no matter which board you're riding. And here's a good question to go into our last topic, pint or save for the XR. Now the easiest way to sum this up would basically be like, the pint is pretty much half of the XR. It's not exactly half, but you're not getting that full top speed. You're not going 18 miles with a packed out battery board like this. The One Wheel Plus XR is coming in at around $1,800, and the Pint is coming in at around $950, depending on which packages you end up going with. So the Pint is basically half the price of the XR. They both ride very similar. I mean, as similar as two almost identical products can, but at the same time, they're also very different. So depending on what you want to do with your One Wheel, if you plan on going on crazy adventures that you don't know how far you're going and you might be riding on sand or rocks or grass or maybe it's just asphalt the whole time. If you're not that sure, maybe the XR is the way to go. If you want something to tool around on and fly down to the convenience store and zip in and out of cars and traffic, I don't recommend that by the way. If you want something that is really quick off the line and ultra maneuverable, then the Pint is the way to go. The reason that I love this thing is for that but also the handle, the size, the weight. You can bring this thing with you literally anywhere you go. They make backpacks for them. You can throw this thing in a backpack and carry it around. If you did that with the XR, you would probably be struggling a little bit. So yeah, it's kind of like the best of both worlds owning both of them. Now I know there are already people commenting, Talon, if you could only have one one wheel, which one would you pick, the XR or the Pint? And that to me, is like asking a parent to pick their favorite child. This child is really good at specific things and this child is also good at specific things, but they're both my children and they're both awesome. They do awesome things. So to that, I would just say, do your own research from here, depending on your budget, depending on how bad you want a one wheel and what you want it to do. Just make an informed decision and hopefully you pick one up and you'll be shredding on one sooner than later. So that's all that I got for today. I'm probably going to hop on the XR now and go take a spin down that trail that I was just on. So if you guys have any questions on the One Wheel Pint, please let me know in the comments down below. I'll leave links and everything down below if you wanna check them out and compare the specs for yourselves. And I guess that's all that I got. So if you're new to this channel, consider clicking subscribe. That bridge is so loud. If you're new to the channel, consider clicking subscribe. I make new videos every week. Thank you for watching. I'll talk to you in the next one. Peace.